Welcome to this quick introduction to signing into Smart Revise. Now when you click on the link provided in the email, you should be seeing this sign up as a student screen. And you can simply start by putting your school email address in and a suitable password. Alternatively, you can use the Microsoft sign-in, which will create a sign-in based on your Microsoft login, so no additional password will be required. You can use the Microsoft button to sign in later, even if you've registered your school email address here. On the next screen, please enter your full first name and last name, and make sure this is correct because we will see this on assessments and so on. We as a school have already checked the privacy policy to make sure it's compliant with GDPR and the terms and conditions are not a problem. So sign off the first two boxes, and if you're happy to be emailed by Smart Revise, you can tick off the bottom box. Then click Sign Up as a Student. Now the first thing you need to do is to go to your email where you need to verify your email address. There should be an email that comes through to you. If you don't see the verify email, do check your junk folder, but you can pop up to your profile, click manage account, and on your main profile, you can click to send the verification email again. You'll get a confirmation that the verification email has been resent. And when I signed in, I had to press that button before I actually received the verification message. Click to confirm your address and your account will be fully enabled. Once done, pop to the dashboard and you'll get this lovely selection of hints and tips to show you exactly how to use the course. And the first thing to do is to join your class. You should find the six digit character code for your class to copy and paste from your email. Once you've done that, you've got to add your course. So pop over to buy or renew a pack and you'll need to look for your course code. If you're on the A-level course, then it's H446. If you're on the GCSE course, then you're looking for J277 and you should see an image of the correct colored box on your email. Since you have a voucher code, you'll press redeem your voucher here and paste in your code. And if you selected the correct course and you put in the correct code, you should see that your voucher has been redeemed. Once you've read the hints and tips, just make sure you click the little box at the bottom and click cancel and that will go away. Click the course name to join the course and you're in. So a quick explanation of the dashboard. Up on the top right, you have analytics. Now analytics allows you to look at your usage and your marks and an overview of your strengths and weaknesses for each of the different types of questions. Awards are kind of badges that allow you to see things you've achieved and things you can go on and do as you build up the number of points. The report gives you a summary of your progress in each of the different sections. And probably the most important thing on this top panel is topic filters. This gives you the structure of the entire GCSE course in this case. And you can use the select all several times to turn on or turn off all the sections. But you can also choose a particular section to focus your questions on. And pressing update filter will mean that questions will only come from the ticked off sections. In the main section, you can see how many days until the first exam for your course. And then you can select the different sections. So quick overview, quiz. This will give you a series of multiple choice questions on the topic that you have selected. Simply read the question and decide on the best answer for you. Telephone number does contain digits, but also has spaces, potentially brackets and so on, so it's stored usually as a string. If you get the question right or the question wrong, it will store that against your username. Questions are more likely to come up if you've attempted them wrong. Once you're ready, click next question and you get a brand new one. And by attempting all the quiz questions in a particular section, you'll get a really good picture of your strengths and weaknesses, which obviously can be analyzed using analytics or through the report. Now, one of the weaker areas for a lot of students, particularly boys, is the literacy aspect of a subject, the ability to interpret questions and the ability to write good definitions. That's what the terms section supports. Really important to practice as many as possible. Terms is a flip card system, and we have interactive mode enabled for our students. Down on the bottom right, you can select what type of questions you want to receive, ones that you've never attempted before. And because you get to self-grade your own answers as less good, fairly good, or awesome, you can decide which terms questions are going to appear for you. So for example, brand new ones and ones that you've got wrong before. So you click build deck, and you'll be presented with a term to define. And once you've attempted your answer, you can then press flip and you get to decide how happy you are with your definition. 
And I would say I'm fairly happy with that one, so I'll give it a smiley face. On to the next one. And again, when you've written your definition, you can press flip. And again, you can decide how accurate you think your answer is. And being honest at this point allows you to focus on weaker questions later. Now, towards the end of the course, you want to focus on advanced questions. These are essentially exam questions. OK, so when the question appears, you'll see the question number. That's actually unique. You can use that question number to refer, for example, if you want to email your teacher and ask about a question later. And you can also make a note of a question and jump directly to that question by typing it in up here on the top right. Below that, you'll see command word help. And that will pick up the command word in the question and explain what that word actually means. So in this case, we've got to produce a numerical result to the answer. So once you've worked out your answer, you can then press mark answer. And this is only a one mark question, so there's only one correct answer, which is 4.8 billion hertz, or, or the fully written version of that answer. And you can access what they call the unguided marking scheme, which shows what the examiner would look at but the guided mark scheme allows you to simply answer yes or no to the questions that it asks and that helps to generate the number of marks so i can click yes in this case and submit the marks and once you submit a brand new random question will be provided and once you've typed your answer you can press mark answer and we can look at the question to see whether we've shown the correct working in this case ending up with 100 divided by 8 to work out the number of bytes in 100 bits, and the final answer of 12 or 13 bytes. Now the final thing to mention is that if your teacher sets you a homework task, they will appear up here at the top in the Your Tasks section. And when those tasks are assessed by your teacher, you will be able to see those tasks appearing in the markbook. In the past couple of years of using Smart Revise, we've seen a direct link between the number of questions, the amount of practice that students put in using the system, and how well they do on the final exam. So start using this system with quiz to identify your weaker areas, and then treat them using terms and advanced questions once you identify where they are. The system works on any browser, even your mobile browser. We'll be looking at how many questions everybody's completed, so try to be at the top of that leaderboard. The very best of luck.